There's one key change that puts Ford, Ram, and GM all on the teetering point of catastrophic business failure. Ford Motor Company, you have lost my business. I've only been driving it about a month now. I put like maybe a thousand miles on it. Yeah, I know they replaced the lifters the first time. $83,000, 2022, and it's a piece of junk. We see lots of inventory here piling up. There's no shortages of trucks, Jeeps, SUVs all the way across this lot. We see the big three trying to put out incentives, trying to move a lot of their product, and even their used vehicles too aren't selling all that well. But there is one unspoken rule that could literally flush every one of these big three down under very quickly. And it has to do with pricing, greed, as well as a law, but we'll get to that. We know some of the greed over at Stellantis has driven the fact that prices have gone up on a lot of their full-size trucks. These HD trucks are some of the worst selling pickup trucks in the industry, as well as Jeep Wranglers have gone up as much as 58% in the last three or four years in terms of base MSRP, have driven a lot of the customers away from buying some of these new vehicles because of the sheer price. Not because they don't like the vehicle, but because they can't afford it. The Dodge Durango's like these two are some of the poorest selling vehicles and are literally on the verge of shutting down. And as a matter of fact, they're moving the assembly of these to the north side of the border. Yes, the Canadian manufacturing facilities likely will be taking these over for an effort for Stellantis to save money on manufacturing costs. And while every manufacturer's cranked up costs in the last three or four years, Stellantis stands out heads and tails above the rest with vehicles even that are relatively poor selling and is no longer a mainstay like this RT Durango right here. We see vehicles that generally aren't selling as well as they once did. And I look here, this is a very basic looking outdated platform. We have the Durango RT Plus all wheel drive and we look at, okay, it was $81,000, but nobody cares about Durangos. It's the full size trucks that we're talking about that aren't selling all that well. Here we have a brand new Ram, a fairly basic looking rig as you can tell. This one here is the 1500 E-Torque right there. And what we're looking at here is a 2025 Ram 1500 Bighorn Sport Quad Cab 4x4. Goes for $69,000 and it doesn't even give you the full, the full back door on this vehicle. They're not selling all that well. Day's supply is rising on a lot of the Ram products as well as we're seeing Ford have cracked up some of their prices. But Ram, they're leveled out because they're not selling. We're still seeing 22, 23s with lot rot written all over them because even the older vehicles aren't selling. And these new ones, the allocations are being pushed out and the dealers just can't push any of these products. They're not selling very well. And in the world I come from, can you justify the price of some of these vehicles? We know Stellantis is ramping up. They want to produce a lot more electric vehicles. And while the rest of the market is saying no to that, the rest of the world is saying we have to transition to the electric vehicle space, but they're not competitive. And while the CEOs continually see additional raises, 30, almost $40 million now, it, it means some of these overhead costs just put these big three out of commission. I mean, even look at this full-size truck right here, 3500 HD Cummins turbo diesel. It's a beautiful truck. You get the single rear wheel here. You get the painted flares, all kinds of drop-down step guards. Look, sunroof, leather, beautiful interior. This one here is a 3500 limited crew night crew night edition, $124,000, 124 grand. When did you ever get to a place where you can actually say $125,000 makes sense for a truck? And Stellantis produces some of the worst selling vehicles like this Dodge Hornet right here is not selling. They're the one of the worst. They're always trading punches with number one, two, three, or four worst selling vehicles in North America and largely because it's overly priced. And that's the problem with Stellantis and a lot of these other big three, Ford, GM, they're creating products that are way high priced. And yet they'll tell you that they don't make enough money to cover their costs. Well, that sounds like a business model issue. And unfortunately, it's going to get worse real soon. It's gonna get much worse before it gets better. Core inflation being closer to two to 3%. We're seeing greedflation kicking into high gear. And these trucks and vehicles are now being produced, seeing increases of 10, 15, 20% year over year in the last three or four years. It doesn't align with inflation, it aligns with greedflation. So how do the domestic vehicles like GM, Chevy, Ford, become so uncompetitive? Why are these vehicles priced so high? Well, let's rewind the tape, shall we? Back to 1964, when the US government imposed heavy taxation called the chicken tax, where they applied 25% tax to any kind of foreign pickup trucks, light duty trucks that were going to hit the market. It became cost prohibitive 
for foreign business to actually come in, enter in the United States. Now, recently, we're also hearing the Canadian government has also said they're applying 100% tariff on Chinese imported electric vehicles. Those are the very factors that are keeping the big three, Ford, GM, and Ram, not competitive and allows them to thrive freely. And sales on full-size pickup trucks have been down year over year. Doesn't matter if you're talking Ford, Ram, or even GM Chevy products. While GM and Chevy had bragged that they had a great year this year and outsold Ford, which collectively was the best-selling light-duty pickup truck in North America for years, the point is year over year sales are down. But what you're not seeing is the fact that the percentage and ratio of vehicles that are actually commercially used or fleet vehicles, and those are the vehicles that are actually holding these brands in order. So right here is an example. This is a fleet vehicle. We're looking at, we have a Silverado. This is a Turbo Max. This, of course, gives you the small base engine. You get, sure, you get four by four here, but you basically will have a single rear cab or a single cab. You have a list of options right there, and it's a 24 model year. And how much do we see this thing go for? $56,000. See right there, that's broken. That's where the market feels to me a little disconnected from reality. For almost $60,000 out the door, it feels like this truck is grossly priced. Here's another Colorado right here. And what's the Colorado going for? Well, this one here is 51 grand as well. Some of these prices are still extraordinarily high. Who's buying them? Well, there's a couple of different types of people that are buying these for the most part. Either extremely well healed and they've got deep pockets and they have all kinds of money to throw around or those people that just don't care about paying 18% finance rates and are okay in digging deep and know they'll never be out of hawk. And according to Experian, the average car loan is now up to about almost 750 bucks and the average loan term for these vehicles is nearing in on 70 months. People are getting in debt over their eyeballs, but a lot of these vehicles here aren't anywhere near that, and if you're gonna take out a loan for something like that, most people are stuck now paying 12, 14, even 15, 1600 dollars a month just to take over that 80, 90 thousand dollar pickup truck loan payment. It's getting out of hand, and now it's getting to a point where the cost of living crisis is pushing people to make decisions to whether they eat, sleep, or buy that new vehicle, and instead they're deciding to let that go because repossessions are up too. And repossessions now we're seeing seven, eight percent in some states. We're actually seeing almost 10 percent repossession rates of vehicles, particularly of buyers who are subprime category. And while Ford keeps jacking their prices up year over year, their truck sales continue to sell. They're one of the most popular full size pickup trucks in North America. And yet they're worried because have you heard recently from a visit back in 2023, the CEO Farley as well as the CO4, CFO Lawler decided to make a trip to China and test out what some of the electric vehicles that China was producing. And we know what the mandate looks like. And these manufacturers are forced to produce these electric vehicles. So the heads of Ford were really concerned, realizing that we're so far behind, we don't have the competitive advantage. And once the open market hits, once the Chinese market hits and runs into North America, we're all in dire straits. Ford, the best-selling truck, truck manufacturer, is worried about this, that they're not gonna be able to sell their electric vehicles. So you know the Mustang Mach-E as well as the Ford F-150 Lightning haven't been that stellar seller, sellers anyway, but things are going to get worse. What do you think Ram's going to do or even GM? GM is also scaling back on the electric vehicle output, but unfortunately the mandate is going to push them into a corner and they have to be competitive because once the Chinese market hits, it's all over but the crying. And Ford's been jacking up prices too. We look at the Tremor and a lot of these vehicles are getting out of control for a lot of people. I mean, here we have an F-150 Tremor, $80,100 or $700. Quite a pricey little so-and-so. And it's a great looking truck, absolutely. But oh, wait a minute. Here's a whole lineup here as well. And hey, price. Oh, here we go, F-150 Platinum. Yes, these are definitely gonna be decked out. We get the spray and liner, we get the rear slider. Beautiful, look at the complicated, this back gate. This is almost too much technology going on here. I feel like something's going to break. You get all of the electrics back there, tie down points. It's a very convenient truck. Of course, as we look inside, you got sunroof, leather, heated, cooled seats, and of course, big infotainment screen. This is absolutely a gorgeous truck. I'm not gonna lie, this is why people get sucked in. They see all the new glitz and glamour and shine and technology. I love the blue, or that black, that new black logo. Beautiful headlights, chrome rims, or not chrome rims, but the glossy rims right there. But look, I mean, even with the mirrors are shiny, you get everything nicely done, painted, painted, everything slick on here. F-150, and this is a platinum, and pretty much the list of options is pretty extensive, and 
I've never seen $106,000. Wow, that is literally out of control. <laughs> this is absolutely too much. $107,000 for a half ton pickup truck. Now I've seen just about everything and it's not even the full size, it's not even a Raptor. That's unreal. So it almost doesn't even matter which brand, Ford, GM, Ram, none of them are competitive enough with the with the CEOs pulling in the big wages, the millions of dollars with the top head at the tables also pulling in significant wages, the UAW constantly pushing for increased wages. Now we're in a place where they're not competitive. All three of the big, the big brands were protected by taxation and tariffs, and now those things are going to be a thing of the past. Unfortunately, these brands are all gonna struggle when it comes time and the Chinese market walks in the door, it's gonna mean that a lot of these manufacturers are gonna either do something drastic with their business model, or in fact, just cut costs entirely and change your entire structure because the way it stands right now, they're not competitive, they're not making enough money, and even the CEO of Ford has recognized these Ford markets are capable of the quality, and unfortunately, these vehicles just don't quite cut it. And in some of these foreign markets where they're manufacturing vehicles that are better quality, more drivable, and as well, they're costing about 20, 30% of what these vehicles cost. Once they pull the drapes away, pull the tariffs away, life's all over but the crying.